Looking at today's ridiculous world of many CPU workloads puts into perspective how far computing has come since early developments. 64-core single-socket CPUs are now in place in servers and even consumer or prosumer electronics are seeing higher and higher core counts each year. Some of AMD and Intel's top-of-the-line consumer-level CPUs are even eating into their own high-performance computing line of Xeons, Threadrippers, and Epics. Gaming processors are catching up to the performance of server processors. So, what's going on? Power draw is becoming the limiting factor in how fast a CPU can operate, processors are reaching theoretical maximums, and, more broadly, Moore's Law is coming to an end. The x86 platform is constrained by heat and power needs, and the next big innovations in computing will have to come from different types of CPU instruction sets. This is where RISC-V comes into play. So a lot of people may not have heard of RISC, and that's for a fair reason. It hasn't been used in consumer devices yet. RISC in general is more of an idea than any specific instruction set. It stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing, and it refers to removing unnecessary components from processors to reduce wasted electric potential. RISC chips can be designed by anyone, not requiring licensing fees, even if you go with an off-the-shelf design. RISC-V was initially created by Chris Anasovic at the University of California, Berkeley, as a tool to teach his students assembly programming without the hassle and complications that arose from sticking with the x86 platform, and currently it is run by Sci-5. Here I have an off-the-shelf schematic for a RISC-V processor, but what if you needed it to do vector math? There are two main approaches to this with RISC-V. First is to include more cache and more cores into the processor design. Since RISC is scalable, doing so is easy. The second approach is to hard-code vector math into the chip as part of what Sci-5 calls SCIE, or Sci-5 Custom Instruction Extensions. These are short, one to two cycle instructions that can perform very optimized tasks very quickly. Sci-5 offers many other ways to customize chips, including added security, development, and power management features. ARM is another computing architecture for the future of computing, and is another branch of reduced instruction set computing. It is also found everywhere, from smartphones to tinker toys to laptops. Oh, and did I mention, AMD tinkered with ARM processors and their original Opteron line of CPUs last decade. ARM has a lot of potential, and that's why the supercomputer Fugaka in Japan currently holds the world record on top 500 using several million ARM64 processing cores. It's extremely competitive in relation to other supercomputers of the world, and is even more competitive in the realm of power efficiency compared to x86. So ARM is good then. Well, maybe. It's more power efficient than x86, though at the moment the cores are also individually slower. Licensing fees are lower compared to x86, though as a reminder from earlier, RISC-V doesn't have any licensing fees to deal with and the RISC-V architecture has similar benefits to ARM. Of course, ARM has not fully matured yet. The platform still has room to improve and eventually catch up to x86 on a per-core basis. And as ARM processors make their way into mainstream consumer products, the rise in supercomputing should soon fall. The big takeaways from this dive into computer architectures is that x86 is growing old and has a lot of vestiges that hold it back from it progressing any further and ARM and RISC-V are in shape to replace it in an ever-changing computer industry, although x86 will likely stick around for a while longer, I fully expect that ARM and RISC-V will make their way into their households and supercomputers by the end of the decade. But that's all just a theory. A computer theory. Thanks for watching.